The Night Beat starts right now. We're live in the Rio Grande Valley where undocumented immigrants continue to cross. We've been speaking with Border Patrol agents who have been on rescues today and earlier this week. We have a full story coming up. And remember that San Antonio couple stuck at sea at the start of the pandemic? They've now spent most of their time at home. The frustrations they're sharing one year later and their plan for the future coming up. But first, we begin with breaking news just weeks after much of the state lost power. ERCOT CEO loses his job. The lead manager for the state's power grid is on his way out. The ERCOT board of directors confirming ERCOT president and CEO Bill Magnus will be given 60 days before he is fired. It follows the blast of freezing temperatures communities across the state endured without power. The two month period will allow Magnus to work with state leaders on potential reforms to ERCOT. The search for a new president and CEO is expected to begin. This is a second senior official to leave their post. Public Utilities Commission Chair Deanne Walker resigned on Monday. We are one week away from the end of the statewide mask mandate tonight. We continue to see a downward trend in our local hospitals. We've seen a decline of 63 patients just since Monday. Tonight, 401 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. 148 are in the intensive care unit and 86 are on ventilators. Six more deaths were confirmed today. Overall, our seven day average of coronavirus cases continues to decrease in Bear County. Governor Greg Abbott says the downward trend is also happening across the state. He says that's part of the reason he decided to end the mask mandate next week. Despite that order, he says Texans have spent the last year learning how to protect themselves and should continue those safe practices like wearing a mask. They know the safe actions to take. Wash your hands, wear a mask, stay a safe distance from others. They don't need a state mandate to tell them what to do. They know what to do. Nevertheless, I did remind them yesterday and I will again today. And that is we're open 100 percent, but you should still Follow the safe practices to make sure that you don't get and you do not spread COVID-19. We talked to the governor live at 6 o'clock. He also mentioned vaccines and those who are vulnerable, ages 65 and older especially. He says more than half of those Texans will be vaccinated by Wednesday when the mask mandate ends. The Texas Tribune reports more than 6% of Texans have been fully vaccinated, though. Experts say that's still nowhere close to reaching herd immunity. You can watch our entire interview with the governor on ksat.com. Well, COVID-19 survivors say the lifting of the statewide mask mandate makes them afraid for their own lives and their loved ones. Two men who nearly died from the virus are now pleading with other Texans to use common sense and keep wearing masks. The night team's Patty Santos reports. Thumbs up, babe. Thumbs up. Okay. The virus left Eladio Rendon a shell of a man last September, and a month earlier, it did the same thing to Carlos Muñiz. It was twice that they said that they didn't think I was going to live through the night. The virus nearly killed them both. What is it going to take? Is it going to take more people dying? Is it going to take losing a mother, losing a brother? losing a husband. That's what they and their families want to ask Governor Greg Abbott about his decision to reopen Texas at 100% without the mask mandate. They pose the same question to those who will choose not to wear them. The virus is going to go up and there's going to be more people in the hospital, more uh, deaths, believe me, uh, and it's going to be scary. They fear for their health, even with the vaccine, that they'll still get sick again, or even worse, that more of their family members will die. Rendon lost his mother to the virus while he fought for his life in the hospital. Muñiz says he and his parents haven't been able to get the shot. Less than 7% of Texans have. With that type of percentage, it's just, it's just way too low for us just to you know, turn away from everything. Um, you know, 100% opening, um, no masks. It's just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Dr. Larry Sashinger with Texas Biomed says there's enough evidence to show that preventative measures like masks and social distancing reduce the spread. The concern is that if we lighten up on some of these measures and we do suffer another resurgence, that there will be a time where these mutant strains of virus begin to be the majority of cases. He says this is a critical time for Texas to hunker down and get the pandemic under control. 
And these two survivors say it's been months since they got out of the hospital, but their bodies are not at 100%. Still, they hope to help others avoid the same fate. They ask the community use common sense and follow the safety protocols. Steve Isis. Thank you, Patty. The San Antonio International Airport reminding travelers the facility will keep the mask mandate in place. The announcement shared on the airport's Facebook page explaining the mask mandate falls under federal requirements at airports and on airplanes. VIA also taking to Facebook to remind passengers they will be required to also wear face coverings on their vehicles and at their facilities. VIA also citing federal requirements for that mandate. The only passengers who are exempt are those under the age of two. Well, a new addition to the vaccine rollout plan. Teachers in Texas, along with school and child care staff, are now eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. The Texas Department of State Health Services made the announcement this afternoon, but the news does not come without its challenges. The challenge will continue to be uh, matching the supply with the demand. So we need to have more vaccines to our community to meet the new demand now that is going to be inclusive of all teachers and school staff. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says vaccine appointments at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall have been booked weeks in advance. He says university may begin to focus their vaccine efforts on teachers on March 22nd, but that plan is still being worked out. When it comes to the other mass vaccination sites, appointments have filled up at the WellMed sites. Recipients would also need to wait for available spots to open up at the Alamo Dome. You can get text alerts for vaccine availability by texting the word vaccine vaccine to 55,000. A traffic diverted the search for a driver underway tonight. We have new details on a crash we first brought you during our six o'clock newscast. Bear County deputies say a bicyclist hit in Vaughn Army just south of Loop 1604. This is in the 4100 block of Smith Street. Two drivers involved in the crash, but investigators say only one of them actually stopped after the accident. The bicyclist listed as unresponsive, but still no update on their condition tonight. Well, border Patrol is reporting an increase of people crossing the border. Most come from Central America as economies worsen and COVID-19 continues to ravage communities there. They hope for a better life in the U.S. The night team's Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the Rio Grande Valley with what Border Patrol agents are seeing there. And Jonathan, talk to us about how the change in administration has impacted what we're seeing at the border. The change in administration has lifted restriction on asylum seekers, but not all trying to get into the U.S. legally. As migrants make their way into the country, the busier Border Patrol agents are de-escalating human smuggling operations. But the impression is that the border is open, uh, and when that happens, you're going to have more people. That's why we're seeing an increase of people coming in. Congressman Henry Cuerra of the 28th District says 70,000 migrants a month for the last four months have been crossing into the U.S. During the Trump administration in March 2020, that number was about 34,000. And that's what concerns me. So do we have a border crisis? No. Can uh, we have a border crisis soon in the future if we keep this trend? Yes, we will. A trend U.S. Border Patrol Special Operations Officer Cristian Alvarez says they are very well aware of human smuggling efforts, one of the top increasing criminal activities. Since October, I think we've seen a, a slight increase, and then uh, now we're, we're reporting them on a daily basis. Stash houses are now being shut down with dozens of immigrants held in captivity for an indefinite amount of time in dangerous conditions. These locations typically won't have electricity, won't be furnished, uh, won't have running water. On Tuesday, agents stopped a significant human smuggling operation. Our agents and other local agencies that were assisting took down three stash houses. 54 people held inside were rescued. The stash houses were discovered in Brownsville, Far and McAllen. Today, Border Patrol Marine units rescued 13 people on a sinking raft. The moment that these uh, individuals decide to go with the smuggler and make that journey into the U.S., they're at, they're at the, the will of the smuggler. Cuellar says they're deploying more Border Patrol agents to this region. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, back to you. Thanks, Jonathan. Still ahead on the night beat, the Spurs set to welcome fans just as the state's mask mandate expires. So what will that mean? 
Greg Simmons with what you can expect at the AT&T Center coming up in sports. Plus. It's not a normal life, like, not like it used to be. A San Antonio couple began the pandemic stuck on a cruise ship. One year later, they've spent most of their time at home. The vacation plans now in the works and the frustrations they're sharing coming up. And one man taking CPS energy to court after last month's brutal, brutal weather. He says they're responsible for his wife's death. How CPS Energy is responding next on the Night Beat. One man accusing CPS Energy of causing his wife's death after last month's winter weather. A lawsuit filed against the utility claims power at the couple's home went out on February 16th, causing temperatures to plummet inside. According to the lawsuit, Ann Rodriguez found dead in her bed the next day. We checked the Bear County Medical Examiner's database, but her death was not listed at the moment. The lawsuit also claims CPS Energy chose not to weatherize facilities to prevent failures in cold weather. It seeks more than $1 million in damages. CPS Energy says they do not comment on active litigation. During the weather event, CPS CEO Paula Gold Williams has said every source of energy was impacted in some way by the sub-freezing temperatures. Texas energy officials have said CPS, along with other energy providers, were ordered to shed load after a rise in power demand. Stuck at sea to stuck at a military base. It was the reality for one San Antonio couple who was rescued from the Diamond Princess cruise ship just as the pandemic began. Don and his wife Natty were flown to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. And it was one year ago today they were finally allowed to leave the base and return home. The night team's Jonathan Cotto caught up with them to see how they're coping with the new normal as they prepare to go on another cruise. It's just as irritating to see this. <laughs> you breathe through your nose and your mouth. It's hard to confront those people because you know what's going to happen. Don and his wife, Natty, have a unique perspective on the pandemic. The San Antonio couple was on a cruise ship off the coast of Japan when the coronavirus was discovered on board early last year. <laughs> Just moments after this dance on the Diamond Princess, Don says thousands of passengers were instructed to go back to their cabins. We had, I believe it's 732 people taken from the ship that we were quarantined on. That included a woman from Australia the couple had dinner with and a Florida man they befriended. And uh, he was on the ventilator for three weeks and almost passed away. The San Antonio couple says they stay in touch with friends they met on that cruise and do what they can to stay COVID free. It's why Don has some frustration when he sees people without a mask. I just want to walk up to him sometime and I want to show him some of the pictures. Of, I'd like to explain to him, you know, I was there. I saw a lot of people being evacuated. So this is a serious uh, disease. Don and Natty had to spend days in their cabins before making it on a plane with crews wearing plastic suits. When they landed in San Antonio, they, along with the rest of the passengers, were guided down the stairs where they had to quarantine at JBSA Lackland. Eventually, they were allowed to return to their home and have rarely left except for a walk outside or a trip to the grocery store. It's not a normal life, like not like it used to be. The rollout of vaccines is helping. Natty is waiting to become eligible for her vaccination, but Don has one dose with a second and already scheduled. I will feel more comfortable, but I still will take precautions like wearing a mask. They hope to be both fully vaccinated before the next cruise in May. We've had four canceled already. Don and Natty say they are ready to travel, but are well aware it won't look like the trips they've taken in the past. You can't completely eliminate everything from your life. We can deal with it. We just have to take a few extra precautions. Jonathan Cotto, Case at 12 News. While the mask mandate will end one week from today in Texas, health officials remind you the pandemic is not over. The same precautions are still recommended to help keep the coronavirus from spreading and mutating. Doctors say you should wear masks that cover your nose and mouth, stay six feet away from others, and of course, wash your hands. Glad that we did that story with Don and Natty because yeah. I remember they, Don and I were email friends back and forth at the beginning. He said, I'm stuck on this boat. 
COVID, yeah. coronavirus running rampant. It's hard to believe seems like that was a year ago. ago. Yeah. It seems like it was a long time ago. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? And, and think about their story, you know, coming to JBSA Lackland, and that's before we had any testing, like, at yeah. all, right? right? It's just crazy a whole year ago. All right, let's talk weather here. Patchy morning fog. Get ready for that early morning commuters. I don't think it's going to be a big issue, but we'll have some of it out there. Warming up through Friday because this weekend temperatures get reset and actually fall back below average. Let's talk temperatures. The look at our beautiful time lapse this evening. Sunset right now, by the way, at 635 PM. We started the day rather chilly at 38 degrees, but then we made it up to 71 for the high temperature, which is pretty much average. So we started 10 degrees below average, topped out just a degree above average. Right now down to 46 Bernie, 49 Bandera, 56 in New Braunfels and Castroville, 54 at Randolph and Pleasanton 57. For the most part, we're in the 50s. Some locations already creeping down into the 40s. Catula and Laredo, Del Rio exceptions still in the low to mid 60s. But tomorrow morning, most of us in the mid 40s, I do think we'll see some readings in the lower 40s to even upper 30s in parts of the hill country tomorrow morning, especially in the typically cooler spots. But by the afternoon, we're warming well into the 70s, so not as cold tonight as last night and tomorrow afternoon will be a little bit warmer. We could even be hitting 80 degrees from Laredo to Catula, Carrizo Springs, Del Rio. You could all make a run at 80 degrees by tomorrow afternoon and we warm up a little bit more on Friday. We tack on a few more degrees even in San Antonio. Wouldn't shock me if we hit 80 on Friday, but then temperatures fall off and by the weekend we're looking at highs below average average being 70 will be below average in the low to mid 60s so nothing drastic but a noticeable change visibility fine right now it's early tomorrow morning let's go through time here's our future cast and it does show some areas of patchy fog developing early tomorrow morning lasting through maybe an hour or two after sunrise visibility maybe down to two miles or so and then quickly burning off by 930, 10 o'clock. We're looking at a clear sky and a lot of sunshine. All right, speaking of our clear sky, just some high thin clouds coming off the Pacific right now. Our next system is actually over Los Angeles and over the desert Southwest. It's dumping some rainfall. It's going to head our way. Unfortunately, it's not going to bring any rain with it. It's just going to bring us a gusty Friday and cooler temperatures for the weekend. So tomorrow, 46 in the morning. 74 by the afternoon after the patchy fog we will have a lot of sunshine and then Friday a gusty day. You'll notice the winds out of the northwest up to 30 miles per hour at times and then we just see those temperatures reset into the weekend and unfortunately not a shot at any rain. Mm, all right. Thanks so much, Adam. All right. So the Spurs will have a representative at all star weekend. He won't actually be in Atlanta, but he'll be representing the Spurs. And when okay. we come back, we'll explain what we're talking about due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But all revolves around Keldon Johnson, who's had a great career so far. Great sophomore season. And we're going to walk you through what Spurs fans are going to have to endure as far as new procedures when they start greeting fans next week when we come back. the All-Star snub. The Spurs will have one player representing them on All-Star Weekend, albeit in name only. The NBA announcement today that Keldon Johnson has been selected to the 2021 Rising Stars roster, becoming the first Spur to do so since Jonathan Simmons back in 2017, even though it won't be played this year. First player selected in just his second season after appearing in less than 20 games as a rookie since Clint Capella back in 2016. In just his sophomore season, Keldon is averaging career highs of 14.3 points, 6.8 rebounds, and 2.2 assists in 28 games, and is on track to become the first Spur in his second season at average at least 14 points and six rebounds a game since Tim Duncan did it back in 1988 and 1999. Spurs are coming off their 119-93 blowout victory over the New York Knicks last night. They saw Trey Lyles lead the silver and black with a career high 18 points, five rebounds, and two assists. But what impressed Pop the most is the 17 assists dished out by DeMar DeRozan and DeJounte Murray as the Spurs unleashed 68 points on the Knicks in the second half. DeRozan with 11 to go along with his 10 points and DeJounte with six more for 17 points overall in their first victory of the season on the second game of back-to-backs. Once again, DeJounte and DeMar, you know, attacking and fighting people between them, 17 assists, one turnover. And it was similar to that last night, you know, those two. So uh, the, the group is playing well. 
and it was good to get some of our COVID guys back too, although they couldn't play. Uh, you know, Derek and, and Rudy and Devin, they were at least here, so we got their personalities back, and Keldon got to play, you know, a couple of minutes now to start getting back into form, so it was a good night. They draw a lot of attention, so that leaves opportunity for myself and others to be able to feed off of that and that show tonight. All right, the Spurs have already told us that despite the governor opening up the state 100 percent and dropping the mask mandate starting next Wednesday, the Spurs will still require their fans to wear a mask when they're not eating or drinking and social distance with the silver and black welcome back fans starting on March the 12th, albeit limited at 3,200 right now. Today, the Spurs Vice President General Manager Casey Heverling walked us through what you can expect when you get to the AT&T Center. The first thing that we're asking every fan to do um, is to go ahead and download the Clear Health Pass app. It's free to download. Uh, you can enter your profile uh, information and then the day of the game, before you leave to come here, fill out your questionnaire on that app and then that will make for a much smoother transition um, here at the security and health screening checkpoint before you get into the arena. And by doing that, do you have to download this app? And if so, where do you download it from? Yeah, so you can go to your normal app store, um, whether you have Android or Apple iOS, uh, you'll search for the Clear Health Pass app. Uh, you download it, again, it's free. You fill out your information, um, you, you uh, do a few biometrics, take a selfie, and you're, you're ready to go for uh, game night. All right, after getting clear with the health and safety protocols, that includes a temperature check. Casey takes us through the next step, which includes a big change. You're really just going to approach our staff. Um, we're going to have uh, social distancing cues on the ground for uh, any lines that may form. Um, and the first thing you'll approach is, is our health screening, and you'll indicate. Sir, welcome to the at and Center. I see you have your clear app available. May I take your temperature? Please. Okay. Thank you, sir. Go ahead Thank you. Proceed. And so the next thing is uh, our, our typical security sure, checkpoint. Sure, sure. And so we have two experiences for those that don't have bags. Um, we encourage you not to bring a bag if you don't have to, but we understand that's not possible. We do have a new bag policy. Um, it's a smaller uh, bag uh, measurement, six inches by eight inches. Reason being, uh, we can search it much quicker, more efficient, and with our new x-ray machines, also an NBA mandate, um, we can uh, search it in a touchless, safe, healthy way. Yeah, that's probably the biggest change there for you. Now that gets you to the front door. Tomorrow, Casey will show us how the new Spurs app will work once you're inside the arena and what new facilities they have erected to make it a touchless experience, even to purchase food and beverage, not to mention the numerous safety measures that are in place and include new filtration systems by Logic. With the deadline less than a week away, how are the contract talks going between the Cowboys and Dak? Next. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. More productive than they have ever been is what the Dallas Morning News is reporting about contract talks between the Cowboys and the star quarterback, Dak Prescott. That's great news when you consider the first deadline for getting a new long-term deal done is March the 9th. That's next Tuesday. Another good sign that talks are going well is that Prescott is at the Cowboys training facility working with trainees on his recovery from the worst injury in his football career. Compound fracture of his right ankle. And according to Sports Illustrated, it could be 100% by April when they could not arrive in an agreement last year. The Cowboys used the franchise tag to keep Prescott and pay him over $31 million last season. This year, they can't reach an agreement. They could franchise tag him again. Only this time, they'd have to pay him over $37 million next season. Let's hope they get this deal done quickly. All right. Thank you, Greg. Thank Encouraging. You. It is. Yeah. Thank goodness. We'll, <laughs> we'll be right back. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Tomorrow morning, we'll see some readings down in the low to mid 40s across most of our area. About 43 Timberwood Park, 44 in Lavernia. And starting the day at 46 in Castorville. But by the afternoon, sunny and well into the 70s. Even warmer, closer to 80 on Friday, but gusty. And then we see those temperatures drop below average this weekend. Thank you, Adam. That does it for the night beat. Don't forget GMSA at 4.30. Good night.